Hello and welcome to The Pickle, brought to you by AC4SA, academic coaching for student athletes, and co-hosted by Ethan O'Day and Jack Sundberg. Here on The Pickle, we discuss with our guests, ranging from coaches to professional athletes, the pickle of all things, academics, sports, recruiting, high school to the pros, you name it, we talk about it. Our goal for the podcast is to give people insight into the sports world and student-athletes' perspectives by sharing current and former athletes, educators, and coaches' real-life experiences. Telling story is one of the most powerful means for leaders to influence, teach, and inspire. These stories resonate in our culture, history, and lesson learned. The Pickle brings you these stories of adversity, triumph, failure, and determination to get inspired, to take them to your school, home, life, and court. Listen, learn, share, and enjoy. Today's guest is Matt Karasiti from Berlin, Connecticut. Matt attended Berlin High School, where he was Gatorade State Player of the Year and a Louisville Slugger All-American. From there, he attended St. John's University. Karasiti made his stamp at St. John's as an All-Big East player, He was the most outstanding pitcher in the Big East Tournament and made three NCAA appearances and was a two-time Big East champion. From there, he was drafted in the MLB draft by the Colorado Rockies. He made his debut with the Rockies. Since then, he has been in the big leagues with the Seattle Mariners, played overseas in Japan, and spent last season with the Boston Red Sox. Matt Karasiti, welcome to The Pickle. The Pickle Pod, we're back and we're better. We're without our uh, fellow co-host Ethan O'Day tonight, but we'll make do. Uh, tonight we got Matt Karasiti on the pod, big leaguer with the Rockies, with the Mariners. Matt, excited to have you on. I think you're going to give us some great insight. Good to be here. I'm excited. Awesome. I'm fired up. Big city on the pod. <laughs> um, I know you're an avid fan of the Pickle Pod, so as you know, we start off with five rapid fire questions, a little icebreaker. Everyone gets to know you a little bit better. Um, dinner with one athlete. Dinner with one athlete. Uh, probably Michael Jordan. Easy. Always, always a good one. Can't go wrong. Probably Michael. Number, number one thing on the bucket list. Uh, go to space. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. We're going to need some big league money for that. <laughs> Um, favorite movie of all time? Uh, favorite movie? This is tough. Uh, Goodfellas, probably. Mm, classic. Another one. Can't go wrong. Um, how do you start your day every morning? Uh, I get up and I take my dog out in the backyard and then I usually go throw every day. Get it. Get it in, baby. You got to get, get in early. Now, now you got a kid now, so it's it's. New I know lifestyle. it's tough. I got to get up at like, I got to get up before he starts crying, so I can get the heck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> um, first quote that comes to mind. First quote that comes to mind. My favorite quote. So I'm right now. I'm I'm back in school, and I'm studying astronomical and planetary sciences. Wow. So I'm reading. I'm reading a lot of like Einstein and stuff like that. And he has a quote says only two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the universe. (laughs) (laughs) I think that might be our best quote on the pod so far. (laughs) He's a smart man. And the background with the space. I mean, come on. Yeah. Awesome. That's it. You completed. Well done. Perfect. Okay. So we'll sort of just dive right in. I think, um, you know, obviously you played baseball at St. John's, you know, drafted the whole nine, um, you know, Connecticut guy going to St. John's. So pretty close to home. Um, talk a little bit about your experience as a student athlete at St. John's. Like, obviously, when you first come in, you know, academically being a student athlete, there's a lot on your plate. Um, talk some things academically first that you struggled with and then later on, like where you found success in all of it. Yeah, I. uh I mean, back in high school, I, I was never really that into academics. Um, mm-hmm. I think a lot of athletes are like that, unfortunately. Um, but once I got to college, I, I 
I hit a roadblock pretty hard my freshman year. I mean, I, I like barely made the cut to be able to play uh-huh. for, uh, for the season. So it was definitely eye opening and, and made me realize I had to, you know, buckle down and actually do my schoolwork. And it was people weren't just going to do it for me. You know, I, I don't know how they do it at, you know, the huge SEC schools and all that. I'm sure <laughs> they have a lot of help with that, but uh, we didn't have that at St. John. So I, it was kind of a slap in the face you know, mm-hmm. a little bit of reality check. But after that, I, I kind of settled in and, you know, it, it's tough going from high school to college. The biggest thing for me was uh, like time management. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm sure you you know this too. Like you get to college and it's like, here's the work. You, if you do it, you do it. If not, you fail. Mm-hmm. Rather than like, you know, in high school, it was like, all right, this is due. This is homework for tomorrow, blah, blah. Like most of the classes are like, this is the, this is the paper you got to write it's due in six weeks. And if you Mm -hmm. don't do it, you're screwed. Yeah. So that, I mean, to me, that was, that was the biggest thing for me uh, was just figuring out how to, you know, be better at time management. Yeah. No, it's funny you say that because I think a lot of times like in high school, even, you know, if you don't hit your grades or something, it's like, okay, well he did okay this semester. He did okay. Like he he can play tonight, but in college, if you don't hit your goal, you're not going to be on the field oh, just yeah. straight up. Oh yeah. And you're not going to be on the field and you're going to be at 6 a.m. running. Yeah. You know, the, the coaches are going to be on you all the time. Right. Yeah. And you're no good to them either because you're not on the field. It's like, exactly. why did we bring in Matt Kara city? If he can't be on the field for us, Yeah, you, but you it's feel worthless. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it seems like, it seems like you figured out, which was good. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about athletically now, because it, it is a major change. You know, you go from high school and, you know, you have practice after school and maybe you're on a club team, but in college, it's like, even if you're a multi-sport guy, all of a sudden you're one sport, you know, you're up, you have, maybe you have 6 a.m. lift twice a week. And then afterwards you have practice from two to six. So you can't yeah. take class from two to six. Then you have study hall every night. It's really rigorous. And I think a lot of student athletes, when they get there, like you said, it's sort of a slap in the face, like, whoa, like, this is like, this is yeah. a lot, like, I'm yeah. nonstop from six to 10pm. Talk a little bit about that, just the culture shift going in athletically playing at St. John's. Yeah, it was, like you said, it's, it's tough, because when you go to college as just a regular student, you have, you know, you can pick classes from 7am to 5pm, right, you can pretty much if you're a morning person, you can be a morning person, but, you know, the, with what we had, and I'm sure it was the same at UConn, it was like, we're lifting at 8 a.m. So like, and then practice is at two. So you got to lift, go to class, and then go to practice for the whole time. So like, you only have like a four hour window to get all your classes in. So you can't go on Rate My Professor and pick yeah. you know, the easiest class or the best, the easiest professor who's the nicest, who doesn't give the, the, the you know, the most homework. So it can be tough with that, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, but it also turns into a a schedule that you get used to. And it just, it just, after like a, you know, a month or two, it just becomes normal. You know, I did, it was a struggle at first, but, uh, I think I ended up liking it in the long run. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's almost like you're forced into time management because if you're not, it's like, you're, you're just going to sink. And it's like, it's almost like you have to be like, which I feel like, even, you know, we have people come on and they talk about, you know, now that they're in the corporate world or they're working jobs, it's, they love athletes because they know how to be, you know, manage their time and make sure when they go there, because there's no choice. It's like, either you manage your time or like, it's probably not going to work. Yeah. 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 Because you're not showing up on class or you're missing class, you're not in your grades. And then in turn, it's, it's probably affecting your performance on the field. Yeah. I mean, we had, we had a couple of guys who, it would, you know, they just, for some reason, they just could not, could not get on the same, same page with the schedule. And it just good players who just fizzle out because of little things like that. I mean, it, you don't want that to be the, the deciding factor of whether or not you stay on a, on the team. You know, if you're playing D1 baseball, like, are you going to be able to live with the fact that you couldn't, the reason you couldn't stay with the team is because you couldn't get up at 8 a.m. and go to lift and then get your classes in so I mean it's it it's tough but it, it, it it's you know once you realize it's just all that's just part of being a student athlete like you, you you know it gets a little easier yeah yeah no definitely realizing it's sort of like it's what you signed up for 
you know yeah. it's like it's tough like you're like you like you think it's very glamorous or you're going to st john's or you're going to yukon or whatever it may be and then you get there and you're like oh my god this is hard work oh yeah. you know and realizing that like hey this is what i signed up for like i can do this or i cannot you know no yeah. one's forcing yeah, you, me to be here yeah the door is always open i mean if you don't want to be there there's i'm sure there's 20 other guys right behind you that are willing to walk through the door absolutely absolutely um you know, the recruiting process is always stressful. I mean, for some guys, you know, they, they get offered by Vandy when they're a sophomore, but for most of <laughs> us regular folk, that's not how it works. Um, so talk a little bit about the recruiting process and, you know, it can be stressful. And I know you were talking to UConn and, and all of that, because it's, especially for kids and parents too, because it's like, they want to make the the right move for their kid or their a coach. Um, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's definitely now that we're older, you know, looking back on it, it's it's such a different perspective now. When I think about, you know, God, it was 12 years ago now that I was leaving high school and going to college, which is crazy. crazy. But I remember it was like probably like sophomore year freshman year I realized like I, I could probably play in college like I you know I throw hard you know I'm a pretty mm -hmm. good baseball player I think I could play in college and you know it's something I always wanted to do so it was something I was striving for but once the recruiting stuff started happening it's you know I was lucky enough I was I was pretty I was like the you know the number one player in Connecticut so I got recruited mm -hmm. hard but I think even even then it came down to schools closer to me Mm -hmm. because, you know, I remember, you know, Clemson would come see me, Florida would come see me, but it was always like, oh, we're, we, you know, we got like 40 other guys that we got to see. So like, you know, yeah. if you want to commit to St. John's or UConn, like, you know, you could do that. Like you should do that. It's like, you know, a lot of kids see these big name schools and that's how I was, you know, I, I want to go play down South. I want to go play on the West coast, mm -hmm. you know, for UCLA. And, you know, you go to all these, you know, you go to showcase and, I did the team USA trials and you meet all these, all these guys from around the country that are going to all these big schools. But then like, you know, now looking at it, it's like a lot of these big schools, they'll recruit 60 pitchers. Yeah. And they'll bring them all in and uh -huh. you think you're the guy. And then you get there and it's like, Hey, like we think you should go to Juco and like, you could, you could use another year of like development and then maybe you could come back. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think once I realized like, I, sh I want to go to a place where I'm going to play mm -hmm. because if you go somewhere and you don't play, you're never going to get any better. And who knows what you could have been. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think looking back on it now, I, I mean, I'm so happy that I made the decision to go to St. John's and, you know, obviously we won a lot of games, beat UConn a bunch. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think that's the biggest thing. It's just really, uh, especially for the parents too, they, they'll see through it more than the kids. Cause you know, I had blinders on. It's like, oh, I, you know, I want to go to Florida. I want to mm -hmm. go to Miami and, you know, Clemson. And, mm -hmm. But you don't want to be just another guy. Like, you want to be a guy that goes in and plays right away. And St. John's gave me that opportunity. And, I, and, you know, I took it and ran with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think half the battle, like you said, is just, is finding the right fit. Um, yeah. And especially for a Northeast guy, it's like you, you don't know what is in store for you oh, down there. Yeah. Like, you're not from around there. You're entering a whole different realm. And like you said, there's, they bring in all these guys and you think yeah. you're going to be the guy. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, you know, we don't really see you as a fit here. And oh, then you're yeah. like, man, where am I now? So I think finding a right fit is huge because you want to go somewhere you can play. And if the end goal is maybe playing professional baseball, yeah, you're not going to get drafted if you're not playing. Exactly. You know, there's and a lot whether, of good, there's a lot of really good D3, D2 arms that are in the big leagues right now because they went to a school where they could play. Mm -hmm. They probably could have went to a, a D one and been like, you know, a guy who threw 10 innings a year, but instead they went and pitched and developed. And mm -hmm. now they're reaping the benefits of actually developing. Right. The biggest thing. I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to see that when you're a kid in high school and you got these big name schools that are sending you, you know, letters in the mail and you know emails the stock letters and you think like oh I want to go here like they want me it's like yeah I mean some you know sometimes I do want you but you don't want to be like I didn't want to be a Matt Carasetti on a team of 50 Matt Carasettis like 
Right. I want I wanted to be my own guy and, and be a guy who actually develops, which which right. is what I think every you know parent and kid should look at when they're in the recruiting process. Yeah. Being able to showcase who you are, what you can do, absolutely. Yeah. Um so obviously you hinted at it a little bit before, you know, guys fizzle out. I think, you know, I came in at UConn with 12 guys in my freshman class, and I think we ended with like five, maybe six. Yeah. Um, so you know, it takes a toll on kids, you know, some kids just don't make it through either. They're not built for it, or it's just not, maybe not the right fit. Yeah. Talk a little bit about, you know, your experience and, you know, your friends in baseball um, and student athletes who had success going through it. And then those who didn't, what were some things that you saw guys were like, yeah, he's going to make it through and he's going to make it to the next level because he's, you know, mastered this, this, and this, or this is someone who, came in and then they fizzled out. They're a great player, but they just couldn't handle it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's weird when you say that. I, I think, I think back to like my recruiting class and it's, you know, you come from high school where it's like, you see these people all the time on your team. Yeah. And like, they don't really go anywhere. You know yeah. I mean? It's like your high school team, but then you go to college and you're like, Oh, these are going to be the guys that are going to be with me for four years. You know, if I'm there for four years, but then you learn quickly, like a lot of these guys aren't going to be here. You yeah. Know I mean, like a lot, like probably chop it in half and being safe, like 50% of those guys are probably going to be gone by mm-hmm. the time I leave here. And, you know, it's, it's weird to see that process happen. And, you know, I don't know if it's just because, you know, my mind, our mindset was different. Like, you know, I didn't ever think I was going to, you know, not play baseball. It yeah. was just like whatever I have to do to get to that next level, to get to college, to get to pro ball, to get to, you know, the big leagues, it, I was just going to do it. And mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's certain guys that's just at the end of the day, you either love baseball enough to push through all that crap that we talked about, the lifting and the practices and, you know, 6 a.m. running and all that stuff. Or you just, some guys just don't want to. And, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the time it just comes down to they just, the passion for the game just isn't there. And they don't feel like what they have to give is, you know, they're getting enough in return, which mm-hmm. is fine. I mean, you know, there's a there's people like that in life in general who hate their job and this and that. and But it's just, you know, to have that mindset to to be, you know, the best, you know, even if the best isn't, you know, Mike Trout or yeah. <laughs> Justin Verlander, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's plenty of guys in the big leagues that aren't Justin Verlander or Mike Trout, you mm-hmm. know, Shohei Otani. Like, mm-hmm. You want to be the best version of you. And if that means, you know, you got to sacrifice a lot. Like, I mean, think back to high school, college, like how much stuff you missed playing, going, playing summer ball. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of people think about that as like, Oh, like I'm missing all this stuff, but like, to me, and I'm sure to you, it was just like, this is just what I need to do to keep moving mm-hmm. along the path to where I want to be. And yeah. some guys just don't think, don't have that mindset of like, this. these are the steps that I need to take to be where I want to be. Right. No, absolutely. And I think half of it is just mindset. Like you said, like, especially when you get to pro ball, like everybody's good. Oh, like yeah. you look around and it's like, it's like, he's good. He's good. Like this guy could play in the big leagues, but it's more of the mindset. Like, are you willing and able to be able to put in the work, be consistent, you know, have a steady head, you know, when you go for a slump, are you going to be able to come back? Um, And same thing with a student athlete. It's the same thing. Like, are you going to be able to push through the rigors of like 6am lift, you know, 10 hours a week study hall. And like you said, study hall. Oh my God. I forgot about that too. (laughs) Oh my God. Don't even get me you got to lug through the snow and get to the study, the study center and sit there. And Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, and like you said, it's like, you know, some of it is passion for sure. It's like, you got to be able to like say to yourself, like, like you said, like, this is what I do, need to do to get where I need to go. And if, if yeah. it's going to be lugging through the snow and going to study hall at yeah. you know 8 PM at night, then that's what I got to do. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it just doesn't, it just doesn't outweigh it for some people, which is not a bad thing. It's yeah, just yeah. like, you know, it's just that you have to understand that like, there's going to be sacrifices that you're going to need to make, um, which goes into our uh, next segment pretty well. You know, obviously everyone 
wants to be a professional athlete, you know, in whatever sport they want to be. I mean, we go talk to middle schools all the time and, you know, you know, I'm sure you get your, we get, you know, the lawyer and the doctor yeah. and stuff like that, but half, you know, more than half is I want to be a professional, blah, blah, blah. I want to be yeah. a professional. I want to go to the NBA, um, which is a great thing, but I think there's also a side to it, which is the reality of being a pro, you know, it's like, like for you example, you know, you're a free agent, you're coming back from an injury. Like this is, this is your life now, you know, you yeah. got a kid, you have a family, you need to get a paycheck. So talk a little bit about the realities of being a pro, you know, you're going on 10 plus years of playing pro ball, which is a, you know, a feat in itself. Um, talk a little bit about just the realities of it and how it all works. Yeah. I think, you know, now that I've been playing for a while and, you know, I've, it's weird when you, when you get drafted, it's like, you know, I got drafted to the Rockies. Like I'm going to be a Rocky for life. Yeah. Like, I'm going to make it to the big leagues with the Rockies. I'm going to play here for my whole career. Like, this is it. Like I made it. And then like you blink your eyes or I blink my eyes. And now I've been on five teams. I've been to a different country to play. And it's <laughs> like, it's just all like, what, what just happened, man? Like, it's crazy. Yeah, I think I think, uh, you know, once, you know, if you're, you know, when you're lucky enough to get drafted, it's, it's you know, it's like the best day ever. Mm -hmm. oh, like I got drafted. I made it like I'm a pro now. Like this is the life. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. And then, you know, you get to short season, you know, short season a ball and you're like, oh, like this is the locker room. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. I just like my, my college locker room was like way nicer. Like I had cushions yeah. on my, in my locker. I had like my own, my own big area. And mm -hmm. now like, you, you know, you got a metal locker, you know, the showers flooding into the locker room. <laughs> You're on a, I'm on an 18 hour, you know, I land in grand junction, you know, the next day I'm on an 18 hour bus ride to you know, <laughs> Helena, Montana. <laughs> and you're like, what just happened, man? Like I didn't sign up for this. Yeah. And you know, a lot of guys that I even, you know, played with in college, you know, two months into pro ball, they're like, dude, like, I don't like this. Like, I don't even yeah. really, I don't even really want to do this anymore. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, it just goes back to what we said before. It's like, this is just part of the path. Like, mm -hmm. I got to do this. Like, I, I can't just like sit here and wallow and be like, mm -hmm. oh, I hate this. It stinks. Like, I should be in double A. I should be in triple A. Like, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Like. I'm ready for this. Like, it's like, no, you're not like, yeah, this is all part of it. Like you get, you go up a level and you get smacked in the face. You go up a level, you get like, not everyone goes, you know, hits 300 every level. And it's like two, three years, you're in the big leagues, you know, mm -hmm. one ERA every level you're in the big leagues. It's like, mm -hmm. like there's, there's big, big roadblocks at every, mm -hmm. at every level for me. And like, you know, I had, I probably had the worst year statistically of all time in the South Atlantic League <laughs> of all time. I mean, everybody look it up. 2013, Matt Carousel. <laughs> probably, there's probably like a, like a crap emoji next to the thing on the <laughs> MILB website. But, I mean, it was brutal. I mean, yeah. and I went out every fifth day and I would give up eight runs at the start. <laughs> and it, it was embarrassing, man. It really was. Yeah. But it was just like, I got, I got to get, I got to figure out a way to do mm -hmm. this. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, you come home and it's like, oh, like, you know, you're a pro bit, you're a pro baseball player. Like what a life, like you got to mm -hmm. be making millions. Like you're making all this money. And it's like, dude, you're, you're making more working at McDonald's than I'm making. You know what Seriously. I mean? Like, you know, too, it's like, yeah, I'm pulling in a thousand dollars a month and I got to mm -hmm. pay rent. I got to pay for food. I got to pay for right. my car. I got to mm -hmm. pay for everything. You know, God forbid, yeah. if I want to fly my wife out this year, it's like, right. I got to, I got to pool up money in the locker room just to see my wife. Yeah. But so it's, it's, it's a stark difference between like what people think and what it actually is. Yeah. But at the end of the day, when you go through all that, you know, if you're lucky enough to get called up and like, you know, I'm not saying I was lucky enough, like I worked, I worked hard for it. Right. When you step on that big league field, it's like, I mean, I don't care if tomorrow my career ends like this is amazing like this is insane yeah so like it's 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 a weird it's a weird thing to go through to be like in the trenches in the minor leagues yeah and then all of a sudden like I mean all it takes is one hot year man and you're 
and you're gone. Like you're up in right. the big leagues. And yeah. But those, you know, it's it's a it's a road and it's it's windy, man. It's crazy. You know, <laughs> too. It's yeah, it's it's definitely not a straight shot. And uh, you know, if if it's it goes back to again, it's like that mentality, like you just have to be because everybody's good, everybody throws 95 now, you know, everybody right. hits 30 bombs now, everyone's got power, everyone has the yep. same swing now to hit homers. Mm-hmm. It's like, what, what do you have up here to separate yourself? So, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And it, it's funny. It's just like, like you said, it's like every level, it's like every level you go, it's like, okay, it's like, oh, I finally made it. Well, no, yeah. this is now we got to work. Even yeah. like when you get to the big leagues, I'm sure it's like, okay, now I'm here. Like I made it now I got to work. Yeah. And the same thing when you come into college, it's like, oh, I made it. I committed. I'm going to St. John's, I'm going to UConn, I'm going to LSU. And then yeah. you get there, it's like, now it's time to work. Yeah. So it's like this, it's this never ending sort of like, you know, it's a job, man. It is. It's a job. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, it's a, absolutely. It's a, game, it's a game, but you know, now I, now I've been in it long enough to, and I've been, I've had the rug pulled out from under me enough times now to realize like, this isn't, this isn't high school based. This isn't just go out, have fun. Right. You know what I mean, this isn't go out and win like in college. Like this is like, like the guy next to you, like you might be boys with him, but like at the end of the day, it's like you either step on his throat or like he's going to yeah. step on yours to get to where you want to go. Absolutely. Like and that, that's a whole different area dynamic of like mental fatigue you talk about like <laughs> you know you meet people and you're like oh this guy's really cool but like at the end of the day he's in the bullpen with me and I'm looking at him like damn like I I can't take a day off like I gotta I gotta right. shove every day mm-hmm. because I need I want that job that's my right. job you know I want to be the guy who gets called it's, up it's like at the end of the year I mean you know too you're I mean cooked mentally <laughs> cooked. cooked it's unreal unreal <laughs> absolutely and it's it's weird because it's like you're it's unlike any other sport i mean you're playing 140 160 games it's like every every day, every day. Every it's day. like it's like hey can i go to a wedding it's like no we can't nope. especially we can't. for posi- position players i mean i yeah. was talking to springer george springer today and it's just like the this the the grind that you guys go through, like your bodies. And it's just like every single day, swinging every day, diving for balls in the outfield every day. Like you got to play like, like, like your life depends on it. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, as a reliever, it's like, Oh, I might not pitch today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I might just be able to kick my feet up in the bullpen. Mm -hmm. It's a 13 to nothing game. And I'm, I'm a closer. Like I'm not going in that game. So like, you know, I'm pretty much checked out in the fourth inning unless there's a huge, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like ridiculous it's, comeback. It's crazy, man. It's, it's a, and every single day it's like that every day you gotta you gotta be show showing up, up. In the routine over and over. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. By, I mean, how many times, of, oh. how many times you got to hear the national anthem? It's incredible. Oh my God. Oh my God. I mean, I love America, but by, we the, end love the, it. Se- by the end of the season, I'm like, Jesus, I, I, I can't hear this one more time. <laughs> <laughs> no, so true. Um, we got two more questions and then we're going to wrap up. But so, you know, being a stat student athlete, we talk a lot. It's, it's hard. It's, it's a lot of work. Um, you know, it's definitely going to be like a very demanding four years if you go do it or five or three, whatever it's going to yeah. be. Um, talk a little bit about the benefits of playing a sport, like the, the power of, of sport and the value of it to you, like in life, you know, uh, what it brought to you now as a family man. Uh, as uh, you know, as a son, you know, as a teammate, what is the value of playing sports in your life? I think, you know, when I think back on like all the people that I've met, like every, the amount of people that we meet playing, Mm -hmm. it's gotta be, I mean, it's compared to everything else, like any other job, it's like, it's night and day. Mm -hmm. Think about the amount of of, of guys that you've played with in your career it's, yeah. it's just it's unbelievable the amount of like friendships you make the the types of people you come across and like I feel like all that just like helps shape who you become you know when you become like a you know I'm 30 now like I'm a full-grown man like I I got drafted and I was 20 years old and I you know I had no idea what, the, what this next 10 years was going to be like. And mm-hmm. when I look back on it now, like baseball is like what made me who I am. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that happened in college, figuring out how to balance school, 
you know, social life, obviously in college is huge. You know, everyone wants to party and have a good time, but like that, even that stuff, figuring out how to do that. And like, you know, what's smart to do and what's not smart to do, you know, it, it, it helps shape you. And it's just, it's crazy to think how much a sport can have an impact on, you know, the person that you are and like mm-hmm. your personality and like the way, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what I would be like if I wasn't in the locker room all the time, you know, you know, cracking jokes and like, you know, people go at each other in the locker room. Like, it's not just like, Hey man, yeah. it's great to see you. Like, you know, there's a lot of smack talk and like uh-huh. you really get thick skin and you learn how to, you know, you learn how to deal with stuff and you learn how to deal with people. Cause there's, mm-hmm. you know, there's good people, but there's a lot of crappy people. Yeah. Especially in baseball, you meet a lot of crappy people. So, yeah, I mean, and, and now I think, I think about like, you know, I'm a dad now and like, you know, how I'm going to raise my kid and like all the things I've learned through baseball. And it's just, it's crazy how it comes full circle. You know, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's such a life coach. And like you said, I think you might be the first person who's come in the pod that says like, you know, baseball in my sport, like, shaped me like who I became like I like maybe I don't know who Matt Kersey would have been without baseball you know it's taken me you know through the hard stuff you know uh you know TJ it's taken me through the good times of you know making my debut so it's like all these different things that shaped you and made you who you are and you're going through so much adversity at such a young age like I feel like a lot of people who aren't student athletes maybe get into a job and then they you know hit a little adversity and it's like oh man what should I do Rather, you're a student athlete and you've played the past four years and you know what it's like to lose teammates, lose games, yeah. you know, lose championships. You're like, oh, I've been here before. I know how to deal with this. Yeah. You got to yeah. write that paper. You got to write that paper at 11 p.m. Because, you know, you had to practice and lift and you didn't have time to do anything. And you got to, you know, you stay up till 3 a.m. doing your work. It's like, you know, that's why companies hire people like that, like mm-hmm. us, because at the end of the day, like, I'm going to get the job done no matter what, like, right. No matter what happens, I'm like, and I learned all that from playing. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You're going to figure out a way to get it done. Our last question here is um, if you had one piece of advice to give to yourself, like, you know, going back in time, you know, talking to Matt when he was a junior at Berlin, hanging out with Marzi and D'Lo, you know, what, what, (laughs) what, what would be the advice to yourself before you went through the whole, you know, process of going to school and playing pro ball, you know, what would you sort of tell yourself back then? Uh, I think honestly, now, like, I'm still pretty much a student athlete. Now I'm back in school. Crazy. You know, I have full course load now. And like, it's just wild to think that I'm still doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm still playing. I'm I'm, now I'm taking classes again. Now that I'm back in school as like a full grown adult, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. we've been through life a little bit now. Uh, I enjoy it. And, yeah. you know, I love learning now and, you know, especially the stuff that I'm, that I'm studying. And I think back then, if, if I could tell myself anything, it would be like, be more passionate about everything you do, mm-hmm. not just about your sport. Mm-hmm. Because I think if I was like that, when I was 17, you know, college would have been a lot easier if I had put more focus on like, okay, like, yeah, this is schoolwork. And yeah, you know, everyone says school's stupid, but you know, I'm here now. So, you know, do, do what you got to do. Like do the same, have the same attitude that you have in baseball for your schoolwork. Mm -hmm. And I I think it would just be a lot for me personally, it would have been a lot easier of a transition if in high school, I was like, okay, like I'm going to dominate baseball and I'm also going to dominate school because it's the same it's when you think about it it's the same thing like you want like I want to get 100 on the test just like I want to throw a no hitter Mm -hmm. when you when you when it boils down to it you either have that mindset of like dominating everything Mm -hmm. or or you don't like you Mm -hmm. you can't be you you can be all in on life in general not Mm -hmm. just your sport and I I think I would have told myself that yeah no I think that's so true and I think a lot of people we have come on. I mean, we had a a lady come on last week and, you know, she played softball at the university of Texas. And, you know, one of her big advice was like, it's okay to have other passions than outside of softball. And especially for her, she was a female and she was like, 
I'm not going to play pro softball anymore to like make substantial money or a career out of it. Like looking back, I wish I would have had a different passion. So maybe I would have taken a major that I'm excited about that could set me up for future. And she talked a lot about, you know, eventually, even if you do play professional sports, you know, it's going to end at some point, Yeah, you know, in a small window of your life. Right. And so it's like, what else can I find that I'm passionate about that I'm excited to learn about that something that I can wake up every day and say, man, I'm excited to do this. This is something that I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. I think, you know, I went to school and it's like, you know, what major is the easiest? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take sports management because it's the easiest. And then, you know, as I got through school, it's like, oh, I kind of hate this. Like, (laughs) I definitely don't want to do this when I'm done. And so I switch it to criminal justice and it's like, I don't want to be a cop. Yeah. And then I get drafted and I'm like, all right, I'll just go through this. I'll go through the motions. I won't take any math classes because I know I'm, I'm probably going to get drafted as a junior and I won't, I won't have to take any of these. Mm-hmm. Or, and now I'm back at school. I'm at ASU and I'm, you know, I'm studying astrophysics and I'm trying to find planets around other stars. And it's something I'm really passionate about, but like, I didn't take any math classes since yeah. 2008. And so like, <laughs> you know, I feel like I'm like, like a baby trying to figure this stuff out. And like, you know, eventually you do, but it's like, like the, the Texas, you know, the woman from Texas uh, softball said, like, find something you're passionate about because at the end of the day, if you're lucky, you play 10 years. Like I feel lucky, you know, I don't have 10 years in the big leagues, but like, even to, to play, play 10, you know, to play 10 years and, you know, only get hurt once. It's like, I'm pretty damn, I feel pretty damn lucky. Mm-hmm. And not that I feel like my window's closing because I still feel like I'm, I can really play, but I'm, you know, I'm 30 now. Like I know I'm not going to play till I'm 50 years old. Right. Like, I'm not going to like, it, that's just not going to happen. Like I'm not, uh-huh. Tom Brady. I'm not Tom Brady, <laughs> but so like have something, you know, it's not bad to have, something you're passionate about as like, you know, it's not even a backup plan. It's just the next step in your life. Right. I don't, I don't think about, you know, I want, hopefully one day I want to work, you know, for NASA or SpaceX and Mm -hmm. I want to find another planet that Mm -hmm. people can live on in the Mm -hmm. way distant future. Yeah. But, you know, I don't think of that as like, Oh, that's plan B if plan A doesn't work out. I think of that as like, this is what I want to do next. This is what I want to conquer next. So like, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, you know, focus on plan a and like that's all like all your energy into that and it's like yeah you can put all your energy into that but you know you can also think like what do i want to do next like right there's nothing wrong with that like setting yourself up absolutely absolutely and it's like you can only take so many swings during the day you can only throw so much during the day believe me i know i can only throw i can only throw so many so (laughs) exactly (laughs) so like there's time to do other things but you get so caught up and hyper focused like you said earlier you get your blinders on it's like you're like boom 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 but it's like to open up and see what else interests you it's like there's nothing wrong with that like no one's and you know maybe in high school people might might funny you but you know down the road it's going to benefit you that much more absolutely matt appreciate you coming on the best as usual that was awesome man Thanks for tuning in to The Pickle. It was brought to you by AC4SA, academic coaching for student athletes, whose goal is to use the power of sport to unleash the athlete's potential in the academic arena.